Hi there, welcome to my build of this 45 inch wingspan new era 3 revisited. In this video I'm going to be preparing the fuselage ready so that we can shape it and try and get that fuselage into a nice sleek bullet shape. So first of all I'm going to be putting the sheeting on this underside on the tail section and I've already cut some of the pieces to do that and that's very straightforward and I'm going to be using this uh, aliphatic resin because it's it dries quite hard but not too hard so it's 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 sandable but it's with PVA sometimes I find it, it doesn't sand particularly well but this stuff is lovely so I'm going to be using that so I'm going to put on that tail section fairly soon then the next thing is to get the underside of the nose and around inside the engine bay. Now for the underside of here where we've got the fuel tank bay I've got a piece of 3 8 10 mil, 9.5 mil balsa which I've fuel proofed, fuel proofed on one side and I've used my Zap 30 minute epoxy thinned down just a little bit with some alcohol and the reason I've done that is so that when I stick it into place I don't have to worry about trying to get in there and, and, do the, uh, and do the fuel proofing afterwards. The other thing I need to do, I mean I need to bring that balsa right down to the nose, but I need to put on some extra balsa on the inside to thicken it up and allow me to take off some of this around here to create that nice bullet shape. So, first thing I'm going to do is Put on, the, uh, put on the tail section, put on the sheeting for that and uh, once that's dry we'll come back and we'll have a look at what we're going to do on the nose. I've got the sheeting finished now on this rear underside. Very, very straightforward. It's a, it's a flat surface, just glue it on and then trim off the, uh, the excess, easy done. Now I want to move on to the front and I've got the sheeting to do on the underside and I have a piece ready for that which I've epoxied to, um, to fuel proof. But before I want to start working on this, I want to build up the engine bay and there's a few pieces that go on here just to thicken these sides up there's some 332nd goes on the sides to thicken that up and there's some um, leading edge stock triangular stock tapered stock whatever uh, that, that goes on the front there as well and all this helps in making it thicker and uh, and allowing it to be shaped we've also got a one and a half mil plywood nose ring which is going to go on the front. Now these sides may have to come in a little bit, probably not, I hope not, but they may do and if they do then obviously if I've already sheeted on the underside that's not going to happen. So that's why I'm leaving the underside sheeting until last. Now to get this in the correct location so that the drive shaft comes centrally and also so that it's parallel to the spinner back plate I'm going to mount the engine first because we have to remember that this engine it's my Irvine 25 already mounted in the the engine mount and you can see there I've got the spinner on now because of the two and a half degrees right thrust it's going to throw that drive shaft off to the right so it's going, just going to throw it off that way a little bit so I want to make sure that I get this piece of plywood perfectly lined up so the drive shaft is coming out the centre but also so that this is parallel to the spinner back plate. 
So I'm going to mount the engine now and then we'll start to put on this balsa and build it up and only when we've done that we'll sheet the underside. I now have the engine mounted and I've got both these pieces of tapered balsa in the front here which the, the nose ring attaches to and I've actually sanded those now so they sit nice and parallel to the spinner I don't know whether that will show very well and there's enough room for the nose ring to slip up behind there and I've also determined that there is enough plenty of balsa there for the nose ring to to go on and I'm not going to need to to pull in the sides at all to try and uh, and, and make that fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now, I've got these nicely sanded across, perfectly lined up, ready to take this nose ring. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the engine, I'm going to put on these 332nd side stiffeners, and then I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to finish the sheeting on that bottom section. And then once I've got that sheeting, slightly proud on this front edge I will again sand this so it's a lovely flat surface ready to take the the nose ring I'd rather get the sheeting on the bottom so it's, it's a little bit fiddly to try and show you this but I'd rather get that sheeting there on the bottom and then fit this nose ring after in exactly the the right place if I put on the, the nose ring and then I've got to do this sheeting. It, it's just not going to be such a nice, uh, a nice finish on the front there. One thing in making this nose ring, I've got these round um, sanding sticks which I've made. Essentially just a piece of dowel with sandpaper on. And they're great for sanding things like this nose ring and getting a, a, a lovely finish. Well, I've now got the nose all built up here with the tapered stock and, and the extra strengtheners and I've even put some triangular stock as per plan along the bottom edge here. I need to sand all this and get this ready to accept the sheeting. I, I've put on a little bit of sheeting here just to extend this further and the reason I've done that is because the sheeting that I'm going to put on next I wanted to have the hole for the steering gear in the centre of this piece of wood. If I hadn't put that on it would have ended up right on the edge which I didn't I didn't want to, to do. So what I've done now is I've cut out a hole for the steering gear and one thing that we, we need to do just before I look at that, the one thing we need to do at this stage and this is absolutely critical you can see I've got the engine back in and I've got all the steering nose gear in and what is absolutely critical is that we make sure we can get access not only to the bolts for the engine mount, we can get the engine in and also we can set the steering gear up when we've got it sheeted. So we need to make sure that everything is absolutely right because once we get this sheeting on uh, we're going to lose access or lose it's going to be very difficult to get access if it's not right. So we need to make sure that we can get our our tools in to do the, the, the screws for the engine mounts or we can get in with a long enough hex there for the steering gear because once we get the sheeting on this is going to suddenly become very difficult if we're not careful. Now I've cut a, a, a slot in this piece of balsa, this 3 8 balsa here which is going to be on the bottom and I've made sure that everything when that's glued down works nicely and that I've got steering gear the I've made sure that I can actually get access nothing is dragging you have I've had to chamfer a little bit out here which I'll, I'll need to um, uh, need to fuel proof again and I need to fuel proof this I've just put that on to close a gap that was here into the fuel bay but we need to make sure that nothing is catching because once this is glued on it's going to be very difficult to change things so as you can see when that is in place this 
turns nice and freely and there's plenty of movement there that will give quite a nice tight turning circle. I'll just zoom in now and just show you very quickly how if, if you saw on one of the, the previous videos I was saying how I this outer sheath here I'd attached it fixed it back here but I was leaving the, the front end free to move and I'll just zoom in on there and I'll show you the benefits of that. There. Now you can see that there because this arm here doesn't move in a linear fashion backwards and forwards it actually comes round in a circle. If we have a little bit of movement in that end tube it gives us a much nicer smoother action there and uh, that moves lovely now and there it's still quite solid the outside of that tube but you can see it just having that slot just gives us a much better angle to work with. Right well I'm totally happy now that I can get access to everything I need which not only includes tightening the bolts but also getting this uh, steering arm in, coupling it up, getting the leg in and I've run through all of that and I'm happy I can do it once it's sheeted. So now I'm going to get on and uh, sand this top edge or bottom edge here so that the seating fits on uh, lovely. One thing I admitted to say was this steering leg is still a little bit too high up. It's mainly because this uh, bit is too long that goes into the mount and it's just touching on the uh, balsa on the, so on the top side here. So I'm just going to trim that and it will sit down probably 5, 10 mil, quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. So it will just sit down a little bit lower, that spring will disappear into, into the, the recess there. So. Let's get this finished now. Well, I've now got the basic shape of the fuselage finished. Uh, we've got the sheeting on the underside, all of the, the extra balsa on the inside, and we've even got the, uh, the nose ring there to, uh, to help us profile around that front. And as we said before, it's offset two and a half degrees, or the engine will be offset two and a half degrees, so this ring is just moved over a little bit so that we get the engine in the center of that. It's the, ne the, the, the next stage of actually profiling this is, is going to be really exciting and it's a job I, I really enjoy because you see what is essentially a fence post turn into something a little bit more sleeker with a nice bullet shaped front. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to getting on and, and, uh, and shaping that. But We've got one more job to do before we start on the fuselage again and that is turning this piece of balsa here or at least a portion of it and this fizzy drinks bottle once I've finished the, the stuff inside it and I'm going to use those to make myself a lovely nice canopy for the top of the fuselage. So I hope you'll come back and join me. Please subscribe so you don't miss that video and uh, we'll get on and make that canopy.